Coming up on First at Four, a Kentucky nonprofit is celebrating six decades of helping folks in the mountains. A look at the organization's impact on eastern Kentucky. Plus, the TSA says it could be the busiest Labor Day travel period ever. How many people are expected to travel and which day will be the busiest? Temperatures right now are in the upper 80s and low 90s. Some places seeing a heat index in the mid 90s. Details in a few minutes. Mountain News First at Four continues. The month of August is ending on a very toasty note. Today is a first alert weather day because of the high temperatures. Meteorologist Eric Dean tells us how long to expect possibly triple digit feels like temperatures. Eric. All right, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, we do have a first alert weather day out as temperatures are going to go back into the mid 90s, especially for Wednesday and Thursday. But right now we're kind of getting a sneak preview as to what's going to be taking place, especially over towards Somerset. Temperatures 93, 94 Ashland, 91 in Moorhead, 90 in Hazard. You see a lot of 90s from Jackson down to Williamsburg, 91 Jacksboro as well as Middlesbrough. That's your actual temperature. This is your feels like temperature. 95 in Somerset, 94 in Manchester, 96 in Ashland, 96 in Lexington, 97 in Louisville. Uh, Jonesville's at 91, 84 in Wise, 93 in Clintwood as well as Grundy. Wayne County, West Virginia is under a heat advisory until Wednesday at 8 p.m. because of the excessive heat and some places seeing the uh, triple digit heat index. All is quiet right now on live pinpoint Doppler radar. Again, this will get a break as we go throughout uh, tonight and for the most part tomorrow. So when you get into tomorrow night, stray shower or two is not out of the question, but the next 12 hours keeps temperatures around 91 by the five o'clock hour, 1 a.m. mild, 73 degrees and mild will be the term when you wake up in the morning as temperatures will be in the upper 60s and low 70s. I'll have your complete first alert forecast coming up in a few minutes, Steve. Eric, thank you. An Eastern Kentucky nonprofit is celebrating a significant milestone. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how the group has made an impact on the region. Staff and volunteers with Christian Appalachian Project are celebrating 60 years of serving people in the mountains. The organization has many programs helping out community members, including home repair and disaster relief services. Their mission is to build hope and transform lives through God's love. Staff member Teresa Gullett says they have been successful in doing that. I think daily we accomplish that. Uh, we give them hope and we just provide services that they, that they need that no one else is there to do. Organizers say they reach parts of each state in the Appalachian region. Staff and volunteers are also celebrating their anniversary with a documentary detailing their impact in Appalachia. In Floyd County, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Christian Appalachian Project was incorporated as a nonprofit in 1964. A priest named Ralph Biding started the nonprofit's work. We'll have a closer look at the impact of the Christian Appalachian Project tonight at 6. Governor Andy Bashir announces the largest jobs project of 2024 in the Commonwealth. While making the rounds in western Kentucky yesterday, Bashir announced that a $232 million expansion is coming to Swedish Match USA. The Owensboro facility produces Swedish Match Zen nicotine pouches. This expansion will add 450 jobs plus 2,800 construction jobs. A New Hampshire resident has died from a rare mosquito-borne illness. The person tested positive for Eastern Equine Encephalitis, or Triple E. It's transmitted to people by infected mosquitoes. The adult was hospitalized with severe central nervous system disease and later died. Triple E is a serious infection that causes flu-like symptoms and can invade a person's brain and spinal cord. The CDC says there are only about 11 human infections reported in the U.S. each year. One of the many hostages abducted by Hamas in the October 7th attack in Israel is now safe at home in his country. Israeli military forces rescued the hostage from a tunnel in southern Gaza today. The 52-year-old father of 11 was kidnapped from his factory security job and held in captivity for 326 days. He appears to be in general good condition, but will require another day or two of medical tests to make sure he is still okay. We are ecstatic with his family, watching him unite with his children, his brothers, was a heartwarming moment for all of us, and we hope to be able to experience such moments 
with many more returned captives here at Sawaka Medical Center. There are still 108 hostages whose families are still waiting to hear news about their loved ones coming home. Get ready for one more blockbuster summer weekend at the nation's airports. The TSA is gearing up for a big finale to a record-breaking summer. Karen Kafa is in Washington with a look at when Labor Day travel will hit its peak. The Transportation Security Administration says they're gearing up for their busiest Labor Day travel period ever. The TSA says they expect to screen more than 17 million passengers between this Thursday and next Wednesday. The holiday weekend set to cap off another busy summer. We certainly saw a lot of travel in 2023. The same has happened in 2024. Labor Day weekend isn't uh, as big of a travel weekend as, say, July 4th or Thanksgiving in the fall, but it is a time for most people to close out their summer. Despite hot demand, airfares were down nearly 3% in July from the year prior, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Katie Nastro of travel website Going says travelers can find end of summer deals. We're seeing great a last minute availability for specific areas, especially domestically. As people tend to travel less, you know, kids are back in school, families aren't traveling nearly as much as they do in the height of summer. Aixa Diaz of AAA says drivers will see savings too. Gas prices have been coming down considerably. The national average is now about 50 cents below what it was last Labor Day weekend. And we've seen prices come down about 15 cents just in the past month. Tuesday's national average for a gallon of regular gas was $3.35, according to AAA. And Diaz says barring any storm impact to Gulf refineries, prices should continue to fall into September. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. SpaceX has pushed today's scheduled launch of Polaris Dawn to tomorrow due to a helium leak. The historic mission will take a civilian crew of four astronauts into a record orbit above Earth, more than three times higher than the International Space Station. Two of the astronauts, Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis, will attempt the first ever commercial spacewalk, something they have spent years preparing for. I think my desire in human spaceflight is to move the needle. It is not without risk, and you're, you're taking that risk because you want to advance the ball forward. Tomorrow's rescheduled launch will happen between 3.30 and 7 a.m. The spacewalk will take place on the third day of the mission. SpaceX says they will live stream it. Consumer Reports revealed its picks for the best used cars on CBS Mornings. The list includes vehicles that are 5 to 10 years old from 26 different car brands. Lexus, Toyota, and Mazda top their rankings of the most reliable used car brands. Consumer Reports surveyed its members about issues with their vehicles, breaking them into major and minor problems. Top picks have to be reliable, safe, and performed well in tests when they were new. Yeah, the used car market, it's, it's starting to rebound a little bit. So in the last year, prices have started to come down about 10%. And inventory is up a little bit, too, compared to the pandemic. And so all that means you're more likely to find the car that you actually want and hopefully pay a you know more reasonable price for it. The average price for a new car right now is around $48,000. Coming up on First at Four, an increasing number of Americans are choosing to chill on vacation, content to plan and do as little as possible. We'll take a look at the relax and recharge trend. And speaking of chill, there's relief somewhere on the seven-day forecast. We've got to get past the next few days first. Details in a few minutes.